so I went to the thrift store and I picked up some good stuff. Not Mr. Moosey. I'm saving him for next time. Mostly because I don't know what to do with him yet. I just had to get him though, and I couldn't wait to show him off. He looks so cursed already. I love it. Enough about Mr. Moosey. See you later, Moosey Poops. So yeah, today I'm doing another thrift store makeover. I just don't have it in hand right now because I'm actually done painting it. I'm just filming this intro after. You'll just have to envision it for now, and then in a couple seconds you'll actually see it. Can you picture it? <laughs> Some hair on my hand. I was originally going for modern spooky with today's makeover, but I don't really think it fits into that category. It ended up being somewhere in between modern spooky and cartoony. Somewhere in here. I'll surprise you. Surprise. So I picked up this thing. It has some windows painted on. Even a fancy looking door. It looks like something you'd see in, I don't know, in the streets of London. That's fancy. It's giving me a very English vibe for some reason. Maybe it's the colors. They look very cold and dreary. I'm about to make this a whole lot more American in a second. We can all move on. It's actually not a house at all. It's a uh, wine holder or milk container. Oh wait, never mind, guys. Apparently it hold everything. I tried acetoning the stickers off. It was a bit of a struggle. These were really stuck on there. In fact, they're gonna require some more acetone, though perhaps not that much. I got a little carried away. There. It's like they were never even there. So this storage crate cost me only $3.99. That's not bad for something that can hold everything. Okay, we're done with that. The surface is pretty smooth. If you look closely, you'll see that there's not a whole lot of texture. So I'm gonna start off by sanding it down. Time to break out the gesso. I layered on a few layers of gesso, but the windows are still kind of peeking through. I think they're slightly raised, maybe stenciled on there or something. Also, this crate is falling apart at the seams. I felt like there wasn't too much I could do to fix that, so I just left it as is. Let's just not focus on that. I tried my best to avoid getting paint on the handle. I didn't tape it up, I'm just trying to work around it. There is some rust on the handle. It's probably pretty old, like most things in England. There is some damage, but overall I'd say it's still in pretty good condition. I'm gessoing the insides. It's hard to reach into here, especially since the dividers aren't removable. I had to angle things just right. Took quite a bit of tactical maneuvering. Painting the very bottom is probably my least favorite part of this whole thing. The insides ended up looking something like this. It's gonna be covered in black anyway, so I'm really hoping that once I paint over this, these raised windows will be less noticeable. I tried to camouflage this crack with white paint, though it's still pretty prominent. I even went over the underbelly, left no stone ungessoed. There's quite a few holes throughout. I think they might be like from a nail gun. I tried filling them in with gesso and I think that did the trick. It worked out pretty well. In in fact, it was perfect. Definitely makes them a lot less noticeable. I already think turning this whole thing white is a huge improvement. Looks very farmhouse-esque. Just don't look inside. That's a work in progress. But yeah, it looks pretty bonny to me. So here it is all primed and everything. Finally ready to start painting. I'm not leaving it white. Instead, this whole thing's gonna be purple. Well, mostly purple. There's actually two different shades of purple I used and tried blending them together. I don't know if you can really tell. I don't think it even mattered at the end. I just wanted to add some color and not have this one just be black and white. Black on the inside was definitely a good call though. The paint just layered on a lot quicker. The windows are still there. That's so annoying. They're not going anywhere. I'm just hoping my idea is busy enough that they just kind of get lost in this whole mess. Now that it's painted, it's kind of reminding me of someone. Previously for my thrift store makeovers, I've worked with a lot of stripes, a lot of lines, and today I'm working with swirls, though arguably my last thrift store makeover also involved swirls. My inspiration for this piece is Sniffledorf. Sniffledorf. He's just very inspiring. What can I say? Sniffledorf. No. Sniffledorf. Sniffledorf's a very high-energy kitty. He requires a lot of attention. He likes running round and round and round and round and round all day long and all night long too. Chasing buffalo mice and rainbow snakes and everything in between. 
Sometimes he runs around and he's not even chasing anything. He'll be huffing and puffing and sit down. But five minutes later, he just bounces right back. So much energy. I just really admire that about him. The cat's tail kind of curls into a swirl. I'm going for like a spooky slash hypnotic sort of feel with this piece. It does look a bit streaky. I'll definitely be layering up the color later on. I realize the swirls look funky. I didn't make them perfect. I didn't want them to be perfect. They're meant to be like misty, ghostly, perfectly imperfect swirls. At first I added a lot of hills and troughs, but I went back in with some purple to tone the speed bumps down. I'm not going to paint out lines in. It's a ghost. I don't really know if it really needs a harsh black outline, but the more I look at it, the more unfinished it looks, so I decided to add an outline. The background was just looking a little too plain, so I added in some stars. Stars. It's really just dots everywhere with bigger dots sprinkled in. That's how I draw stars. But anyways, you didn't come here for a tutorial on how to draw stars, unless you did, in which case you must be truly desperate. I'm basically just redrawing the ghost kitty all over this whole crate situation, just in different poses and expressions. I thought it would be cool to have him hanging upside down, a loose interpretation of cool. I had to reposition the arms a couple times to get him just right. First he has him fist pumping the air. Yay! That's too excited. I'm gonna bring that down 10 notches. Gotta be chill about it. Never mind. I don't like that. I'm reversing it back to happy dead kitty mode. He's just hanging upside down, <laughs> winking for the ladies. Here's a close up of how streaky everything is looking. Thought you should get a good look at this. I'm done with the swirls. No more swirls for today. But I couldn't leave things like this. It's looking too empty, so more stars to go around. This time, however, I added two Saturns and a meteor to the mix. I just wanted to keep things interesting. All right, now time for the sides. I'll have to fix that later. I must warn you guys, Ghost Kitty gained a little weight on this side. He's been eating everything, edible or inedible. Doesn't matter. He'll just eat it all. Step alert. Honestly looking more like an owl than a cat. Even the expression on his face looks like he's hooting, Ooh. which was unintentional. I was just trying to add a variety to the facial expressions. There's just one last side left. This one's the one with the damage, so I saved this eyesore for last. I was having a little moment with this side. I drew the basic outline of the cat. The fat head, the two ears, basic stuff. I did it on every side. And then I decided, you know what, it's time to take a break and admire my work. So I started twirling. I legit don't know what was going on here. All right, back to my masterpiece. I really like doing thrift store makeovers because sometimes you can pick up things that you can actually use, like Mr. Moosey. I'm gonna use this to store some of Sniffledorf's toys and wands. He gets bored really fast. He only likes things for like a week, sometimes a day. But it's fun to see him get excited about a new toy. Yay. I did some finishing touches and things. The handle was kind of a pain in the butt. When I tried acetoning the paint off it, the black color also kept coming off. And then it just looked rusty and bad. So I'm actually going over the handle with some black multi-surface paint and hopefully that'll stick on there. There's also like a crevice running through the front of my work, which is not okay. So I'm trying to shove paint in there to make the crevice less noticeable. I'd give myself an A for effort. If you stand six feet away, you won't even notice the crevice. I feel like Mod Podge leaves like a sticky film on things. Even when it's dry, it's still kind of sticky. So sometimes I like to use Mr. Super Clear to seal things, especially smaller things. I looked it up and it says Mr. Super Clear is only toxic in its fluid state. It's completely harmless when it's dry, which is important since like I said, I'm using it to store some of Sniffledorf's toys. We've got some little crinklies, some pom-poms. He loves pom-poms. Some bell balls, which he's whatever about. I also have a ton of these stuffed animal things. I think they might have catnip in them. I don't know. Sniffledorf doesn't really have a reaction to catnip. At least not yet. Maybe he's just too young for that. I don't know.
never play with these and now you like them. I'm not putting his wands in just because they don't really fit. I wish they did, but they would just kind of flop around. I can't fit all of his toys into here, but it's good for some of these smaller ones. So yeah, the ghost kitty storage crate milk thing, straight from England. Click here if you don't want to be run over by a buffalo! <laughs> ah!